IMSA fans, I have the remarkable Kyle Kirkwood, part of the Vassar Sullivan Lexus team, Florida native. We're here at Sebring, one of the most celebrated racetracks in the world, part That's of correct. your home state. 72 years of amazing history. And we're at the one corner when we talk about respect the bumps. This is the one where if you've never done a moon launch before, you and your Lexus RCF GT3, boy, you get fired to the heavens through here. We're doing a crucial corner series, Kyle. So I want to talk about what you need to do to come in here with a lot of speed, knowing you want to get out as quickly as you can, a long straightaway, but in the middle. Wow, there are some real bumps to deal with. Yeah, there sure is. And we're standing next to, I believe, the biggest bump potentially at any permanent road course that you've ever had to see or deal with um, in one of the highest speed corners that we ever deal with. Um, to me, this, this is probably the most iconic corner in all of motorsports. This last corner here coming under the bridge, it sets you up for the start finish line, sets you up for the start, sets you up for restarts. Um, but there's a little bit more than just the bump here. The entire corner you're turning, there's, it's not like a point and shoot. Like there are a lot of street courses that we go to where there is bumps, you're point and shoot. You know, it's, it's kind of straight line, you get over the bumps and you go straight. Here, you're turning the entire brake zone. You're doing 100 miles an hour plus in GTP through these bumps and all the way to the exit. It's not very forgiving. There's concrete walls, there's tire barriers, there's no runoff, there's nothing, right? You just have bumps, a lot of speed, and you are kind of just praying through here. And so this, what we're standing on, all part of this amazing World War II bomber yep. airfield. It's a lot of originality. There's a lot of attempted repairs over the years, but nonetheless, if you look down to the track surface here, you have the bottoms of the cars just cutting and shaving and breaking away the track from contact being made. You're feeling all that through your seat. There's a pounding going on here through the corner. Yes, and I believe this bump right here that we're looking at, it's really hard to see on camera, but this is the sole reason why IndyCar does not do the entire road <laughs> course. It's only, we only run the short course over there, and it's because if we hit this bump, you might not be able to see it, but this is probably a four inch, five inch undulation at potentially 130, 140 miles per hour. That's more than what our static ride height is yeah. at any racetrack that we go to. You'd break so, the car in half. Yeah, it, it would be, it, it would not end prettily, or it's not even a word, but we're gonna say it. We made it up. Yep. That's a good one in Florida, prettily. We're using that prettily. from now on. Uh, copyright, Kyle Kirkwood's send all the money <laughs> to him if that ever gets used. So cool thing, so this launching point in these transitions here. Notice that obviously there's a lot of hitting and hard contact being made with the track with the bottom of the cars, hitting that bump and coming up. Mm -hmm. and you'll notice here beneath us, not a lot of rubber marks, but then we start to pick them up heavily. And what does that mean? It means You're the car flying. is in the air. <laughs> you just <laughs> flew through here. Yep. And it is coming down hard. You wanting masterful control of your Lexus at all times, of course would want right. all four tires on the ground. Of course. Tell folks what it's like though, going off the little vert ramp here, coming across on three wheels, maybe two sometimes, if you get a big jump, kind, kind having of two. to settle yep. and control the car and continue making speed. It's a wild part of every lap. Yeah, so I mean, there's many ways that you can take this corner, right? Some guys, they, they break a little later, they end up a little bit wider here. I'd say for, the, for every car that I've ever driven, I've always found it more advantageous to just go straight over the bump. And, and bite the bullet. With, with that, you're just committing, right? And, and usually you kind of induce understeer and then make sure that you load kind of the left front suspension and the, and the left rear suspension takes kind of the brute force of that bump and that kind of softens the car. If you go over it with actually no wheel into it, it's actually gonna be a stiffer platform and you're gonna bottom harder, you're gonna launch even more and it just does not turn into a happy corner after that. So I tend to like to go straight over it, lots of wheel into it and then the car is actually gonna jump, your hands are gonna open up and then as it lands, you're gonna go back into some wheels. So that's what you're seeing right there. That's why there's that clean portion of the track because no car's ever touched right there. It's touching before, it's jumped now. Um, and then it gets very coarse and very grippy right here as we start making our way towards even some more bumps uh, as we're heading towards the exit. 
and you can see here evidence. This is work by the fine folks at Sebring International Raceway to try and fill in some of the divots, but we talk about all the rubber that's laid down from cars making contact, hard contact here. You then get into some more divots and bumps and some more over here, and so it's a big bouncy castle. Yes, that's correct. And as you can see, every single one of these individual concrete patches that are laid, none of them are even. That's across the entire <laughs> racetrack that we're driving on this. This was actually built in 1940. 52 is the first 31, race, but I don't know. I think the concrete forever. was actually poured in 1941, and it's constantly moving. We all know we're in Florida. I'm a Floridian. We're living in a swamp. Everything's sinking to some extent. So every single one of these concrete patches are moving, and it changes every year, too. Um, and you kind of have to adjust your line and, and change things up year after year based on that. And uh, I'd say over the past couple of years, you've actually seen these bumps increase in here and also down in turn one. Can I just share my appreciation for the fact that while we go to many amazing tracks on the IMSA calendar each year, perfectly manicured, the track surfaces are just polished and loved. <laughs> I appreciate Kyle that while Sebring takes great care of what they have, they don't want to try and make everything perfect and flat and level because it adds so much character. Sebring character, without that's the word, this yep. character be less spectacular. I love that, that they say, this is who we are, embrace it. And you're one of the drivers who says, bring it on. I love this track. I love this track. I love the bumps. It's uh, something that's just so unique to this place. And um, hopefully it never changes. You're right. So getting through here, you've gone through the bouncy castle portion <laughs> under the bridge. You have a second or two of the car being vaguely stable. And then we have more jump off points here. And this one is always fun because, especially at night, you get a lot of sparks coming off the oh, left yeah. side of the car. You're trailing folks and seeing those sparks flying at you. This is a long journey <laughs> of controlling is. a car that's like a bucking Bronco. Yeah, so by this point in the corner, you're full throttle. You, you are committed to the exit you're probably dealing with some level of understeer at this point because you just you have that understeer after that bump and you're kind of just carrying a lot of wheel and then you just snap to power right and you're carrying some understeer but as you can see this bump up here where it, it kind of goes dark for a second <laughs> that's where it drops down it comes back up and that's the tires landing into it and that's where you're going to see some grounded spots primarily from the gtp cars or the prototype cars that are bottoming through here mostly those are the cars that are having more sparks, right? And this is the one that will catch you out. This is the one that will spit you off into the wall if you hit it wrong and you get some kind of slide, whatever it might be. Um, this is a sketchy one because you're driving through this off the rear tires. That one you're driving off the front tires, but this one, you're going a lot quicker. It's going off the rear and you got to catch it every single time you come over it. You get to do this so many times during this event and during the race. Last question for you, Kyle. Is there ever a point where it becomes automatic? You've done it so many times, you know the flow, or is this keeping you on your toes every lap? This keeps you on your toes. This is uh, the one corner that in an endurance race never becomes automatic. There's always things changing. There's always cars passing you. You're always getting put in a different spot. And as you know, Sebring, the, the track's not the same one inch here versus one inch there everything's always changing and you always have to stay on your toes here because this place is probably the least forgiving racetrack and this is probably the least forgiving corner in all of motorsports so you're on your toes for a whole 12 hours and that explains why in victory lane which is right over there saturday night for all those who win in each class not saying this is the event that folks love to win more than any other on the imsa calendar but it does explain why the excitement and jubilation from those winners Saturday night, there's a story behind it. It wasn't just having fun going around for 12 hours. It was, we just survived, first of all, <laughs> right. and we right, won. Right. I can't believe both happened. So hopefully we'll have some great news for you. See you in around that podium with your Vassar Sullivan Lexus That's team. the plan. Second last year, one more stop, or one more place for this year. Kyle Kirkwood, thanks for telling us about your favorite home state track and all the things that make it so unique. You're welcome, of course.
Make sure you follow along with us on IMSA's official YouTube channel and follow IMSA Racing on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and X. We're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff with some pretty cool people with some pretty cool race cars. Visit IMSA.com to hear the action called live and download the official IMSA app to follow the timing and scoring information as the sessions take place.